Foundation leaks can be a major source of stress and expense for homeowners. So I'm going to show you a few simple methods where the average person can DIY their own solution. Here we have a common problem in basements, and that's these vertical cracks that happen uh, throughout time. Uh, usually caused by shrinkage of the uh, cement, maybe a little bit of shifting in the foundation. But what happens is we get bugs, dirt, and water coming in through these cracks. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. So our goal here is to inject waterproof glue right into the crack itself as far back as the earth on the other side of the cement. In order to do that, we got to peel off anything on the surface. Sometimes uh, previous homeowners would have put a little bit of glue on the outside in hopes of stopping the water, but without a full injection, it's not really going to stop anything. So peel off any glue on the surface and just get a thin blade and work it in there to loosen up any dirt as far back as you can go. Take like a vacuum or a uh, pressurized air and just clean that out of there as far back as you can go. Now that we got the uh, crack all cleaned out, we're going to uh, just put a bead of adhesive on the outside of the crack just to seal the outside, which is preparation for step number two, injection. So you want to use a, a tube like this, basically a caulking tube, so that you can use pressure to inject the crack. And uh, the best stuff to use is uh, polyurethane uh, adhesive of some sort. You can either use polyurethane construction adhesive or you can go to the cement section of your hardware store and get special stuff for sealing cement. While we're waiting for that glue to dry, I'm going to give you a demonstration on the two main types of foundation cracks. We'll use these pieces of cement board to represent our foundation. Now the foundations typically have two types of cracks. There's the cracks that run vertically, and there's cracks that run horizontally. Now the vertical cracks are not so much of a problem because you've got two main forces acting on a foundation. Force number one is the push of the weight of the house downwards, and force number two is the pressure of the soil pushing in on the foundation. So you can see on a vertical crack, if I push down and then push behind at the same time to represent the soil, there's no movement. However, we have a horizontal crack, and I push down and add the element of the soil in, foundation buckles. So if you have a vertical crack in your foundation, you don't really have too much of a structural problem and filling it is not too big of a deal. However, if you have a horizontal crack, you may have major structural issues with your foundation. And before filling it, I would recommend you go see an engineer and have them look at your foundation just to see if it uh, requires any reinforcement of any kind. Once the glue you've put on the outside of your crack is all dry, you can drill into it. You want to use a bit uh, that's slightly smaller than the nozzle of your uh, caulking tube. And we're going to drill in about every 8 inches or so starting at the bottom and working our way up. Now if the crack is skinny, you can use a masonry bit that'll drill partly into the cement itself so you can uh, inject the uh, nozzle of the caulking gun and uh, if the crack is wide like this one is we can just use a wood bit because it uh, cuts nicely through the glue.
Just to elaborate on how effective downspout extensions are, I had a house which had uh, major cracks in the foundation. Some of these cracks were about an inch wide. In addition to the cracks, there were no downspout extensions, so the water pooled next to the foundation and poured in through the cracks. And as a result, there were major puddles on the basement floor. After I put downspout extensions on, there was no more water coming into the basement, even without repairing the cracks. So that just kind of shows you how drainage control can really help uh, dry your basement. Here we have a basement window that's sitting basically right on the grade. Every time it snows and it melts or you get a heavy rain, we actually get water coming into the basement through the seam between the foundation and the window frame. First thing we do here is we take our window well, that's galvanized steel, and we just uh, position it where we want its location. That way we can uh, use that as a marker for where we're going to be digging. Now we take our shovel and just mark the outside of the window well. We just use our foot there to press it in a little bit to make a line. We go all around the perimeter of the window well. Now we remove the window well and you can see there that we've got a nice uh, outline of where we want to be digging. So you can use a pickaxe or a bar like I've used here and you just break off the surface layer. Just ram that rod into the ground. Then you grab your shovel and scoop out the stuff you've broken off at the surface. And you do this a few times, progressively getting deeper. And here's the finished hole. And what we've also done is slope the bottom of the hole so that the water can drain away from the house rather than towards it. And then once the hole is finished, then you put the window well retainer into place. And you can see around the edges, you're probably going to have a gap between the grade and the window well retainer. So what we're going to do is just fill that hole. Just use some of the earth that you dug out. And you can uh, dump your rocks in. Use this just so that when it rains you don't get the mud uh, splattering onto your window. You can see here that this yard has uh, a whole bunch of groundwater that is pooling beside the foundation of the house. So getting this away will help with any uh, potential foundation leaks. What we're doing here is just trenching along the fence line which is conveniently located near the low spot in the yard. We're just digging the trench along to a lower point in the yard so it drains all this water away from the house. Is usually settle over the years so it's not uncommon to find the grade of the yard lower around the perimeter of the house than it is further out in the yard. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video and found it helpful, or subscribe to get fast access to all our new videos. Check you next time.